Today, I'm wrapping up my final prospect rankings for the 2024 NFL Draft with my favorite position to watch, the corner position. I'm going to include slot corners on this list. It's going to be a top 15, so we're about to have a hell lot of fun. And this Friday, I'm going to do my top 200 big board. So be on the look for that. But without further ado, let's go ahead, get into this sucker. Starting with number 15, Nehemiah Pritchett out of Auburn, coming in at six foot. 190 pounds, been a five-year player there at Auburn this past season. Did miss the first three games of the season with a nagging ankle injury. But then he started the next nine, was phenomenal. Had three pass breakups, uh, an interception, only allowed 134 yards receiving. And I'm he's been kind of a late riser for me. Like Between the two Auburn corners, I think Pritchett's my cup of tea. Uh, <laughs> spoiler alert. No DJ James on this list. I'm probably the the guy who's the lowest on DJ James. And I just kind of prefer Pritchett because at least he's got that build. I'm not gonna worry about size with him. He can't he was a little slender coming into the year, but it put on that size, maintain a hella good speed, like 43640. So I like that. Long athlete. Plays with good footwork. I like him best in off coverage, but did play a little bit of press this year. Uh, there was a lot of trust in that uh, Auburn coaching staff when it came to their corners. They trust them in press, off coverage, man, zone. They really opened up the playbook with those guys. Plays with a cr real quick trigger, and he clicks and closes really well. That's kind of why I like him more so in off coverage. And he's shown really good recovery speed downfield. But just a lack of ball skills throughout his whole career. Like he may have that recovery speed, but he does a really poor job, I think, of getting his head around to make a play on the ball. I mean, and if you go back and watch his film, he actually has quite a few dropped interceptions. So you are gonna worry about the lack of ball skills when it comes to him. But I don't worry about his physicality like I would with DJ James, who's a bit more undersized. As Pritchett, he's got good size, he's got good length, and he's not afraid to put his nose in the action. He's not afraid to put hands on the receiver. He's not afraid to come up and make a play in the run game. However, I would say his tackling technique is a bit meh, as uh, he tends to go for like the big shoulder instead of uh, securing a wrap up. As you look at his missed tackle percentage this year, it was 17.2%. Not terrible, but not great. The year before, it was 22.9%, so a wee bit higher. But like all in all, man, I'm a big fan of Pritchett. It does give me some uh, flashes of Troy Pride Jr., who was a bit, bit, bit slender, but really good speed. But with Troy Pride, I felt like he was more of a zone-only corner where i feel like pritchett you could probably there's a little bit more diversity in terms of what you could do schematically um i don't love him against press but i don't mind him i don't dislike him in press i just think he clicks and closes so uh, so quickly that why not have him in NOF coverage at number 14 i have kaylin carson out of wake forest coming in at six foot 193 and he is just such a smooth football player plays with real greasy hips able to mirror and uh, stick with any receiver stay in phase with any receiver just because of how smooth and seamless he is out of his transition and he's on top of that he's a very smart player uh he shows really good route recognition and knows when to pick up on route tendencies no know, knows when to jump routes take risks uh, does a good job of putting his hands on wide receivers. Uh, very competitive at the catch point. Unfortunately, typically a lot of that is just him reading the receiver. He's not usually getting his head around to not make an actual play on the football. And I mentioned his hands does a good job of uh, laying hands on the receiver, but he can get overtly aggressive with the hands. It wasn't nearly as much of a problem this year. But you did see in games against more physical wide receivers like Keon Coleman just absolutely bodied him. And Keon Coleman was able to get a couple of calls to go his way. So Carson, it's more so probably against more physical, bigger type of uh, pass catchers where that, that, that tendency to not just play physical, but to push it over the line and just play overtly. 
physical to where you're going to get a call. I think that's probably where that, that all stems from. Because, I mean, I always say this, that I'd rather teach someone to be less physical than having to teach someone who just doesn't have that physicality in their nature to be more. I feel like it's easier to reel it back than just teach someone that just doesn't have that in them. You know, they don't have that dog in them. Uh, on top of that, good tackler. He's been a very solid tackler this past year. 11.8% uh, missed tackle rate. Pretty solid for the corner position. Uh, and he has extensive special teams experience as well. But you do worry about the lawn speed. A guy that probably does have to put lay hands on the receiver. If he's going to be able to stay in their hip pocket. Especially if they're vertical speedsters. Uh, if he's going to stay in their hip pocket through the remainder of the whole route. Kind of gives me Christian Fulton vibes. And I like Fulton coming out of LSU. And to be fair, like Fulton, I know last year wasn't great for him, but look at the years prior when he was healthy. Like he was pretty darn solid uh, cornerback too. And I think that's probably where Kalen Carson's going to end up being. Listen, I know you love the NFL draft as much as I do, and you're going to want a nice hefty watch list of players during this college football season well go ahead check out my draft guide you can purchase it for only 30 bucks by venmoing or paypaling me links in the description it's a one-time payment and you get it for this whole draft cycle and forever and always technically it's a google spreadsheet so send me your email when you send the payment i'll get you hooked up you will see my current prospect rankings and big board my full evals and guess what it updates throughout the whole draft cycle so it's a great purchase and it's a great way to support the channel at number 13 i have andrew phillips out of kentucky coming at 5'11, 190 pounds and he was kind of a hot riser during the senior bowl week a lot of people liked uh the physicality he played with uh against guys like lad mcconkey uh was it jaquan jackson the two lane receiver and I, I'm just going to say this. Many people are much higher on him than I am. Uh, I And I'll kind of get into the nitpicks and kind of feel like he's probably more of a off coverage zone guy because like he can play press. But if you're going to have him press in against guys, his size are bigger, like or bigger pass catchers in general. I don't he doesn't he doesn't play with that same level of physicality. You know, he almost feels like a bully in that regard where he'll only really get physical with receivers his size or lower. Uh, but when it comes to, oh, no, there's the bigger, bigger dog in the trailer park today. I'm just going to keep my head down. I kind of feel like that. I feel like that shows up with him, not just uh, at the Senior Bowl, but on tape. But I really like him in off coverage because I think he, he plays with good footwork and good acceleration. Like he explodes, explodes downhill, comes in with a head full of steam. And honestly, at his best when he's able to read the quarterback, like he shows really good anticipation in off coverage. And I think you could probably, because because one of the gripes with him will be a lack of ball skills and not not really lack of ball skills, but lack of splash plays like i don't think he has an interception in his whole career there at uh kentucky and just at times would feel a tad late and i think you could minimize that by having him in an off coverage and knowing that he has such good burst and explosiveness to come downhill that you take advantage of that and maybe he could get under something and then take it to the house uh, that's where i really really like him and on top of that he comes downhill with a lot of physicality like he doesn't mind throwing caution in the wind and throwing his body around. Unfortunately, it's kind of lent itself to him being a not a solid tackler just because, again, he's just kind of throwing your bo his body at him. And being a smaller guy, you think that's going to work against like running backs or tight ends. He's going to bounce right off of him. It's like throwing a washcloth at, at the wall. It's just going to splat, oh, and fall right off. And, I mean, that's kind of shown in his missed tackle rate this past season 22.6 percent like all in all man i'm a big fan of phillips and i kind i really like the comp of kenny moore someone who was okay on the outside but really found his stride in the slot maybe phillips maybe he ends up being a slot guy i wouldn't my i'd still try him out on the outside really kind of depends on the scheme again i feel like he's a bit more scheme specific 
uh, and I just don't feel like part of him has that dog in him. Uh, if you're going to have him playing a lot of like maybe like man coverage, like I don't know if I like that because I don't necessarily think he he's he's like he's an OK athlete, just not an elite athlete. But all in all, I like Phillips, just not as much as the general draft consensus. At number 12, I have Jarvis Brownlee Jr. out of Louisville coming in at 5'10", 194 pounds. And someone who wasn't really on my radar until Senior Bowl week. And I was actually more, more anticipating his teammate, Quincy Riley, who just eventually decided to return to school. And I was like, oh, I haven't really got a chance to get around to this Brownlee guy. Let's just see how he does at the Senior Bowl. It ends up being one of the better corners there. Like, it wasn't, don't get me wrong, was no Quinion Mitchell. We'll talk about him much later on the list. But a very solid weekend. I was like, okay, I got to go back and watch this guy's tape. And it's good tape. It's good tape. It's almost like I feel like him and Andrew Phillips, they're two very I, stylistically very different in terms of, like, I feel like Brownlee's probably the better press corner, but Phillips is definitely the better off coverage guy. He really, it really is because Brownlee is could be very high risk, high reward at times. That's just kind of his playing style. When you're playing off coverage, that lends yourself. If, if, if you're aggressive, it just lends yourself to giving up the big play. If you're biting on play action, if you're uh, just trying to read the quarterback and make these jumps, then you're going to get got and you're going to have to really rely on your backup because even then, like your recovery speed ain't going to be enough to do do nothing. You're kind of you're gonna be kind of hoping that you got that safety blanket back there, so that's why I like him in press. And he is so feisty, so feisty. Loves to lay hands. Will lay hands immediately. I know he's a bit smaller, but he plays with good strength along his frame. He's not afraid to get physical at the line of scrimmage or during the route. Does a good job of being physical without necessarily having to be too handsy, um, like when get like when given leverage. And whatnot, just kind of dictating the route the receiver need will have to go through. And I'm not gonna say that like translates against bigger pass catchers. I think those will be a problem for him. But unlike Andrew Phillips, who he's a bully until there's a bigger dog in the lot, Brownlee is like. No, I am the big dog at all times. <laughs> truly, truly is. Is a bit narrow in his uh I guess his startup stance, his setup stance, and then kind of like pops out. So it's a little wasted movement there. But I mean, that's something that's easy to iron out. I'm not too worried about. I'm not afraid of. Uh, but I like the change of direction. I like the quick feet. I know you're going to look at 4-5-4. Four, four. It's like, oh, that's not all that fast. But he can cover a guy sideline to sideline if you're asking him to have to run with a speedster downfield in like island coverage. Yeah, probably won't always work there because more so he's going to be playing the receiver in that regard like he already has a nasty uh, habit of not tracking the ball well and just trying to play to the receiver rather than turning and trying to make a play on the ball so th there will be a l little concerns with that but i love the dude's physicality he brings a lot of uh special teams experience he's been very good against the run had a uh 10 percent missed tackle rate during his uh career so solid i like it i love it i want some more of it all in all uh, i got garrett williams i think garrett williams is a bit better of an athlete if you don't know he's the arizona i think he's probably gonna play slot this year but uh he was coming to ask syracuse couldn't really test out because of an acl injury in the 2023 draft ends up going i think in the third round but williams might be a better long field athlete but i feel like in terms of uh, just their, their ability to mirror and the lack of fear to get physical when you need to. I think it's all there when it comes to Brownlee. At number 11, I have Kamari Lasseter out of Georgia coming in at 5'11", 186 pounds. And a lot of people dropped him quite a bit because of that 40 time, that 464. Yeah, it's not a great time. You're not looking for not, not a lot of 46 or slower quarters make it in the NFL. I think really the only guy out there is right now is uh, Darian Kendrick, uh, who 
is probably replaceable there for the Rams, but he's all right. He's been all right. He's been all right. But Lassiter is a smooth mover. He truly, truly is. Plays with very uh, greasy hips, just a very fluid, very flexible athlete. And you, you just like the polish that he plays with. He, he does a good job of laying hands on corners, getting in their hip pockets, staying sticky throughout, uh, just in while in phase, and generally is really good with his route anticipation, his route recognition, knows when to come downhill, knows how to navigate traffic, uh, whether it's to get to a pass catcher or a ball carrier. And he, he doesn't mind getting physical. He truly, truly does and does a good job of, at the very least, pushing pushing plays toward the sidelines. Does he takes appropriate ankle angles. Uh, might not be the most disruptive run defender, but he just does his job and he does it well. And you are going to worry about like the lawn speed or the lack thereof. Uh, it's not like he's got this big frame, but like he's someone that that does play physical and I don't know. You may worry about the play strength. I'm not too concerned about it. And if if anything, I'm kind of curious, can he is if he can make the move to slot? Either either he's gonna be he's gonna I think he's in a zone heavy coverage regardless, but I think you could probably Put him in the slot and feel good about him. He hasn't had a lot of splash plays out there on the outside. And he hardly has any slot experience there coming out of Georgia. But I could definitely see like a Byron Murphy who coming out of Washington. Who, yeah, he was a bit faster. I think he ran like 4.55, 4.56. But who could have that inside-outside flexibility. It just all in all is a smart corner. Like, uh, I, I think that's what Lasser can be. He's never going to be, like, your corner one. But he's going to be someone who is going to be a part of the big three, you know, the two outside, one guy in the slot. He could be a part of that. Is he, he going to be an outside? Is he going to be a slot? That's kind of the question. He is, a like, I said he's got an average frame, and it's just like he's just, just not that big. But he's not that small, don't get me wrong. So, like again, I think the movement skills, the lateral ability, is just much better than uh, his lawn speed. So you probably stick him in the slot where you kind of feel queasy if you're dealing with maybe like a good vertical slot, like a Jaden Reed. Uh, then maybe you you try to hide that in some way, some shape or form. But regardless, like Lassiter, for the longest time, has kind of been this uh, top ten corner, and since I'm including slot corners on this list he just kind of just kind of pops out of the top 10 for me at number 10 i have renardo green out of florida state coming in six foot 186 and he was actually playing safety for a couple of years at florida state before kicking back outside at corner in 2022 and then this year kind of had the breakout year it was pretty a darn good and this is a cat that might have some of the best press technique i think in the whole class like he plays with good patience he knows how to use his length and use it well does a good job of staying in the hip pocket of receivers and he knows how to put himself between the ball and the receiver does a very good job at that very competitive at the catch point and also very aggressive in run defense as well he does a good job of keeping his eyes in the backfield early into the play and does a good job step in on the throttle when he needs to make a play in the backfield the missed tackle rate was relatively solid at 12.8 percent pretty solid for a corner in my opinion and i think yeah through and through he's a press corner and i got the jeff okuda comp because one thing i really wanted to see okuda get better at in his final year at ohio state was making plays on the football like he did a good job of getting between him and like getting between the ball and the receiver but i wanted to see those incompletions turn into interceptions and right now green is kind of there i want to see those incompletions turn to interceptions i want some of those pass breakups to become interceptions and some of that it's like he just doesn't 
play the ball at all. Like uh, he will play the receiver downfield and not necessarily like the most high end athlete, though still a solid athlete in in his regard. But just but, but like more so again, just plays the receiver when the receiver catches it. Like he does a good job of like scrapping and clawing and making sure, hey, if the receiver's gonna catch the ball on me then it, it's a fight. It's well-earned. Like, he, he is really good at that peanut punch. Uh, also, a guy that could be a bit too handsy at the next level, does rely a lot on contact. But, again, I'd rather teach those guys uh, who are already physical to be less physical. Did have six, uh, was flagged six times this past season. But all in all, man, Renardo Green, uh, it, he, he was really good at the Shrine. He's been kind of a hot riser for me. Hot riser? Golly, that sounds sounds intimate. That sounds sensual. He's been a hot riser for me through this process. At number nine, I have Ennis Rakestraw Jr. Adam Mazou coming in at 5'11", 183 pounds. And this is probably another prospect that I'm going to be a little lower on than the general consensus and probably even the NFL. But, like, let's talk about what we like about him because, like, the dude is technically sound when it comes to his footwork, uh, how he uses his hands. Though didn't see a lot of press reps there at Mizzou. When he did, he, he showed, hey, I ain't half bad. I know how to use my hands and use them well. It's just just downfield is when his hands kind of get a little bit too handsy. Uh, but I think this is a guy that can be fluent really in any coverage uh, style and even a dude with slot experience that could kick inside and you'd still feel really really good about uh, as a tackler he's pretty darn solid as well does a good job tackling out in space uh, remains uh, in the play even when the ball carrier tries to put him in a blender he, he's just a positive in the run game but i do feel like he's better in off coverage or at least he's more comfortable he's more comfortable uh, more comfortable coming downhill and kind of choosing when to engage with the receiver whether it's in coverage during the route or as a blocker i feel like he'd rather dictate that than you know being thrown in press coverage so i'm not kind of in on him as a press corner but it is something that the few times we've seen he, he i think he performed well at i think he's a solid athlete unfortunately he's not the athlete that we thought he would test out as like mizzou during their spring practices we're like oh we have him at 436 we have him at a 40 inch vert uh 124 inches on the broad and that just unfortunately wasn't the case he ends up running a 451 uh four inches lower on the broad i'm not worried about that so i don't really care but i think he does a good job of sticking with receivers downfield it's really when he ends up biting on maybe a double move or something and has to make up ground i just don't feel like he has that recovery speed to make up the ground lost like i don't know if he's a guy that can really afford a big misstep uh like that and unfortunately, not a lot of splash plays in coverage. Just not a lot of ball skills uh, shown on tape. Uh, only one career interception. Uh, also a guy that's been beat up a little bit. He had an ACL injury uh, back in 2021. He was slowed by a groin injury this past season. I'm not too worried about it, but I mean, I guess a guy who has a bit more of a slender frame, maybe you should, yeah, maybe you should bring it up be like, ah, could this be a problem in the nfl again i'm not too worried about it uh i see a little bit of deandre baker because i do feel like downfield maybe gets a little bit more handsy uh baker i felt like during the later part of his rookie year was a little bit better down the stretch unfortunately his stupidity had him out of out of the league relatively quickly but like rake straw is someone who i feel like if you're gonna have him start early you're gonna have some of those you're gonna have a rough time. I mean, just think of uh uh Tyreek Stevenson this past season for the Bears, who that first half of the season was rough, but then he really caught on fire during the later stretch and was like, This is the guy we were hoping to get when we drafted him. Just kind of had, you know, sometimes guys have to just 
acclimate themselves to the NFL uh, in terms of physicality and speed. And I think Greg Straw is someone that, like, again, if he struggles early, I'm not going to be too concerned about. At number eight, I have Max Melanin out of Rutgers coming in at 5'11", 187. And this is a dude who just plays with that absolute dog in him. He really, really does. He's long. He's explosive. Very physical press corner. And honestly, I want to see him play press a lot in the NFL. He loves laying hands upon these receivers. And yes, he could get a little bit too aggressive with the hands at times. Was flagged fa- five times this past season, but again, I kind of I don't mind that so much. I'd rather teach those guys to reel it back. I've already said it enough this video, so I don't mind that he's a little bit overtly aggressive at that. I just love the feistiness he plays with. He's feisty at the catch point. He's been a starter since his freshman season. If you don't know, his brother Bo is actually in the league. He was, uh, I think, drafted initially by the Seahawks. He was a receiver out of Rutgers. And now he's with the Packers. So, I don't know. Maybe they reunite in the NFL. That'd be kind of cool. And then during practices, you would have Max covering Bo. That would be wild. That would actually be, wow. That, that would be an incredible experience for brothers. We have brothers doing that in the NFL today. What am I talking about? Uh, regardless, though, this is a dude that he plays with that physicality. He doesn't mind coming in and... Playing the run is just like he doesn't have like ideal play strength, I think, and not the cleanest tackler either. But like the willingness is there, the want is there. A guy that doesn't mind putting his nose in the action, like it's there. It's just he's not the cleanest finisher in that regard. I think it was like uh, what twenty six point seven percent missed tackle rate this past season, but. He's someone who has really fine tuned his game year after year after year. Like the footwork was pretty smooth uh, this season. However, I do feel like he is going to have problems with more shiftier, craftier route runners as he can look a little stiff in that regard. But uh, this is a, this is a dude that I think can play inside and out. Uh, gives me some uh, Darquez Denard vibes, who ultimately ended up being like a good slot in the NFL. But that had that was playing inside and out early in his career before finding the home, his home. And when he did, he was actually pretty darn good. I think injuries kind of caught up with him. But uh other thing we should probably bring up with Max Melton is the whole paintball incident. Young kids being young. It's stupid. Uh he's got a what aggravated assault where he was charged with. I don't even know if he was charged. Let me read this real quick. Yeah, okay, he was shooting paintballs at some kids at the end of the day it's young kids being dumb i mean i i wouldn't care i don't care too much about it he meant no harm by it It would have been something i personally would have probably done in high school just a young kid being dumb i'm sure he learned from it (laughs) oh golly man man shot three students with a paintball gun from a moving vehicle so it was a drive-by holy moly honestly i will say i will say this alternatively a much safer drive-by at number seven i have mike saner still out of michigan coming in at 5'9 179 and yeah he's a bit small he's probably a slot only but with that in mind i think he has the chance to be a hell of a good one I truly, truly do, because he is a very, very smooth athlete. He has showcased a ton of ball skills. Truly had six interceptions this past season. I think one or two of them were pick sixes as well. And, I mean, it's funny. It's like, oh, man, he's got some legit ball skills. Well, he was a receiver, actually, a couple of years ago. Uh, Funny enough, I believe uh, he showed up as a receiver and didn't make the uh, move to corner until 2022, where he actually kind of had a breakout year in 2022. That's why he made most people's like summer watch list. Uh, he was actually a prospect we talked about last year potentially coming out. But again, a lot of those Michigan guys returned because they wanted to win that natty. And they did. And they did. But I think he plays with a really good uh, like change of direction. I think he's just a very smooth, fluid athlete. Very good instincts and hands. Uh almost like he played receiver just has an understanding of what receivers are about to do and he just jumps in so nice but 
He's also a cat that just plays with that dog in him, man. He is aggressive by nature. He does a, a good job of putting his nose in the action. Actually, pretty decent tackler considering the size, 14.3%. And it, all in all, a natural born, born leader, a guy that's been praised by coaches and teammates for his, his, his work ethic. Uh, he was the captain on the uh, a captain on defense this past season, and a guy that has seen his fair share of uh, just like trials and tribulations through his life. If you're unfamiliar, man, he was born in Haiti, and his father was a newsroom director at a radio station. And after receiving threats after the uh, tw uh, 2000 Haiti presidential election, uh, they fled. And this was when he was only seven months old and ended up uh, finding their way to Massachusetts, which is a word that I pronounce terribly, but ended up being Gator Gatorade player of the year there. Also, the dude's a musician. That's kind of rad. It's kind of rad. So there's some fun facts about him, but let's talk about where he's limited size. That's kind of the big knock on him and really the only knock. He's not really big enough to play a safety role. You kind of still worry about him inside there in the slot, but he can't be playing on the outside at, in that size. At least you just don't uh, you don't anticipate him to. And he, he is very very much limited in what he could do as a run defender because like he's just gonna get engulfed by bigger blockers. And it's like, hey, you can have that dog in you, but like sometimes sometimes your size is your size and it's going to show up and it has shown up for St. still he does get a little more i don't i don't want to say he, he's like high risk high reward like he understands where he's going like he, he let's say he plays maybe a little big headed like yeah i think that's probably the best way to put it like he thinks he knows what he's seeing and then better that he gets caught with something else and but i mean it's those same type of anticipation skills that made him like so good at creating turnovers maybe i'm not too worried about that but i put here is a little bit more reactive than proactive but i don't think that's even necessarily true it's just sometimes he gets got uh and rather being more precautionary he's like no i absolutely know what's going on here send it let's do it but again, that has resulted in the big play. So I feel like you, you just go ahead and take that and be like, hey, he's going to miss on some. Kind of is what it is. But same we're still really good. Mike Hilton, kind of the easiest comp to make on this list. And number six, I have TJ Tampa out of Iowa State coming in six foot one, 189 pounds. And probably one of the more divisive players when it comes to where do you rank this guy in the draft community? You either really like him or you really don't either see him as a second rounder or you see him as a fourth rounder and that's just kind of where people are when it comes to tampa and i feel like a lot of that's highlighted by like people don't love his long speed uh they don't love what he can do in run support like for a guy that has his length and his body that he should be a better tackler but i feel like uh i i mean i feel like having that build and it's like okay we this guy is very capable. I mean, he's got a good amount of special teams experience. It's just a matter of just getting him more consistent, whether it is wrapping up. He had a 16.9% missed tackle rate this past season. But whether it's wrapping up, whether it's uh, quickly trying to disengage when you're getting blocked by receivers and maybe just taking better angles and whatnot. So I'm not at all too worried about it. I think those are things you can adjust. I, I more so look at that size. I look at that length. I look at that movement skills. I think he's very explosive when he comes downhill. Probably a guy that's gonna like probably a guy that's gonna have to play off coverage just because not a lot of press reps there in Iowa State. So he's kind of an unknown, but with his length, you would kind of expect, yeah, no, he's probably a perfect fit as a as a press corner, but I don't know if I'm entirely sold on that. Uh, I I really do feel like I like him in zone coverage primarily. I don't think I want to see him uh, get 
taken from sideline to sideline by a receiver, especially if we're talking like speedsters. Uh, I think that's where he can get beat. So you could mitigate that just by having him in a zone heavy uh, system. And I mean, the dude has showcased some legit ball skills, six pass breakups this past season, uh, two interceptions. He's got quick feet, keeps his head on a swivel. So I kind of, I kind of just like him, uh, like off coverage in zone and someone who will be able to gear down and explode downhill off that plant and make a play. That's kind of where I like him at. And I mean, he's got the length to dictate that again, you're either not necessarily all in on him, but it, you, you either feel really good about him early to mid second round, or you're just kind of like, yeah, he's probably like a fourth round or might sneak into the third round. You either love him or you like him. At number five, I have Nate Wiggins out of Clemson coming in at six foot one, 182 pounds. And I'm not afraid that he'll put on more size because fun fact, he's still a growing boy. He will be 20 entering his rookie season he is by far the youngest corner in this draft class and the tools are very very alluring very uh they'll have you salivated like he is a top tier athlete like no kidding ran that four two eight forty but the movement skills are pretty darn good plays with quick feet uh, he clicks and closes very quickly, shows very good recovery speed where all everyone and their mom talks about him chasing down that uh, that North Carolina running back and forcing the fumble right there at the goal line. So he plays with no quit in him. He's shown to be good in zone and man coverage because he, he's just got that athleticism to be able to really mirror anybody, but also he could really click and close extremely quickly. And I mean, when he's got his hands on the football, he has made, turned it into big plays. I think he, he already has like through two years of being a big, like a full-time starter, he has two pick sixes. So I like that. Sign me up for more, senor. Uh, but the, the right now, the, the build is thin. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about maybe the lack of physicality in his game i'm worried about that sometimes he doesn't trust his own athleticism like you'll see at the top of routes like if he kind of guesses wrong or if he gets got by like maybe a uh um a double move or when receivers put hands on him like that's where he'll get grabby and it's like hey dude have faith you have the athleticism to like recover so you don't need to turn this into automatic dpi or holding and whatnot so it's something i do want to see him get a little bit better at uh, a few minor injuries over the course of his career you might worry that about that with a slender build but like i said he's a grown boy he'll put on size i'm not, not afraid not a lot of experience in the slot but then again i think i'm having him play on the outside so i don't really care too much about that some people might point to uh maturity issues but he's been a model student athlete the last two years he was in Dabo Sweeney's doghouse his freshman season but Dabo Sweeney himself commented on how much he has matured and truly become um one of felt like one of the leaders of this defense so I'm not worried about that straight up listen everyone and their mom Dominique Rogers Cromartie I'll be shocked if this isn't a majority of most people's comps for Nate Wiggins. If you're looking for like a thin, stupid, athletic corner, this is kind of the comp you go to. So, sorry, not sorry, I guess. Uh, but man, yeah, no, I like Nate Wiggins. I just, and it's not even a matter of, I'm not high on him. I just really like the four guys in front of him a, a bit more. Uh, I mean, shoot, dude, entering the season during my summer evals, uh, I didn't have Nate Wiggins on my top 10, but I made it a case to talk after the video about him that, hey, this is a cat that has first round potential, like watch out. And here we are. He's probably going to be a first rounder. 
At number four, I have Kool-Aid McKinstry out of Alabama coming in at 5'11", 199 pounds, and I'm an utter mark for Kool-Aid. I love red Kool-Aid. I love great Kool-Aid. I love blue Kool-Aid. I love this Kool-Aid. He got his nickname because his grandma said as a toddler, that boy always be smiling. And when I turn on Kool-Aid film, I always be smiling. He is utterly shut down in most regards. He has good length. He does a uh, great job of mirroring defenders. There's little wasted movement uh, in his, his ability to mirror. And he does, he plays with really, really good hands. He knows how to keep his hands discreet. And he, he's just been solid the last two years. Like only allowed 205 yards this past season. He was a second team All-American in 2022. He was a first team All-American this past season. Shoot, go back to his freshman year where he was an SEC All-Freshman. That's right. This cat, he do be good. I like him at the catch point as well. Even if a receiver ends up coming down with it, he's making sure he's going to scrap and he's going to claw. He's going to make sure that receiver earns that catch. He will throw the peanut punch and try to force that sucker out. And that's actually resulted in some of the incompletions. But to be fair, they weren't throwing this cat's way this past season. They weren't. That's why Terry and Arnold, his freaking, his pass breakups and interceptions were out the wazoo because they weren't going Kool-Aid's way. They truly weren't. But is he a perfect prospect? Pro, pro, probably not. Like the dude's a smooth uh, mover, but he's like an average athlete. You're like he's all right. Yeah, he's good. He's good. But he's a guy that relies on his ability to see the field, route recognition. Um, again, little wasted movement, and and he clicks and closes very quickly. Like i I, honestly i think he could play press i think he'd play off coverage i think he could play man i think he'd play zone i think he could really do whatever you ask him to do the question is uh is he someone that can rise to the top and be a corner one in the nfl and i'm gonna be honest i think that he can he's currently 22nd on my big board uh, the physicality, like I, I said, he was pretty good against the run, solid tackler, wraps up with good technique, but his physicality has been a bit inconsistent, like downfield sometimes, like th there are moments where like I'm watching Cooley and I'm like, I said he's got discreet hands, but there are times where it's like, that probably should have been a flag. Like he's gotten away with some, he has definitely gotten away with some. And then as a run, uh, defender, like there's times where he'll try to go and lower the shoulder and just kind of feels like a fly smacking a wall. Pop. Pop. So, like, I know that he is a sure tackler, so maybe be a little less aggressive in that regard and just try to go for the wrap-up. Like, we're talking an 8.1% missed tackle rate this past season, so... Maybe just kind of eliminate those from uh, his game. Does have return capabilities. Unfortunately, five months, muffs the past two seasons. Probably not going to be returned punts then. But I think that's A-OK. -okay. Uh, I, I do think he's got some AJ Terrell in him where he could be a very quality corner in the NFL and maybe even get to that top 15. But at the very least, I think he's probably got one of the highest floors in this class where he is going to be a really good corner two think like a dj reed at number three i have kool-aid's teammate terry and arnold out of alabama coming in at six foot 189 pounds and he beats kool-aid by a whopping two spots on my big board what can i say maybe i'm a sucker for ball skills and arnold has the ball skills but he's a very smooth athlete plays with very quick feet i won't say he's like entirely polished in terms of his back pedal uh, but he's got greasy hips. He's got the capability of being a bit smoother. So I think it's just kind of a work in progress there. But I think he's probably trended. He's definitely trended in the right direction. And he tracks the ball so stinking well. He showcased the ball skills. Three pass breakups. Five interceptions this past season. And also he did a good job when targeted. Only allowing uh, 400 yards, 441 yards, and two touchdowns. Because he was getting targeted pretty heavily because Kool-Aid was just so shut down on the other side. And Arnold, he welcomed the challenge. And this is a guy that honestly plays with no fear, whether it's like having to 
run with someone down downfield or if it means coming downhill and making a play in the run game he's capable of doing that it's just i think the play speed not the play speed but the uh play strength it's okay i think there's times that receivers can lock him up but i think he's relatively solid enough he's a cat that does uh that you feel like can play probably inside in the slot and on the outside uh nick saban didn't play a lot of press this year and a lot of that had to do with he didn't feel like the receivers or the corners he had there in place were capable of it so not a lot of true press reps on film but he's got the length and i think the play strength is good enough and i think the feet are good enough or not even good enough i think he's got really good feet for him to succeed at that at the next level but there were times where he gets a little bit grabby at the top of routes so i don't know man maybe, maybe a guy that if you do play him in a lot of press early on gets called for holding quite a bit uh the uh long speed and the recovery speed it's fairly average solid enough i think it's fine i think it it won't be as as detrimental as his play recognition kind of gets up there and just his ball skills like come on Deron Bland had to be the, the comp. A guy who can work in the slot and work outside and kind of was a pick six magnet. Not saying, not saying Arnold is going to be a pick six guy in the NFL, but someone who has displayed the ball skills and has made it work uh, both on the inside and out. At number two, I have Cooper DeGene out of Iowa coming in at six foot one, 202 pounds. Currently 17th on my big board, and I see him as an outside corner. I know some people are going to look at that Mika Fitzpatrick combo. You're like, oh, so you see him as like a safety slot. No, I think he can make it on the outside. But, 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 if it doesn't work there, I think it would be a hella good safety slash slot. Uh, Mika Fitzpatrick honestly wasn't terrible. Uh outside in year one for the dolphins it all went to hell early on in year two led to him getting traded but kind of is what it is kind of is what it is i'm not here to talk about the dolphins i'm here about i'm here to talk about cooper DeJean, who is just hella good at everything that he does if you're unfamiliar he played quarterback and defensive back in high school he also played basketball baseball ran track like, the dude is just a bona fide athlete. If you're unfamiliar, he is the second leading scorer in basketball in the state of Iowa behind TJ Hawkinson, who is currently playing tight end for the Minnesota Vikings. But he had an offer to play quarterback at South Dakota State, who, hey, fun fact, that's kind of your FCS, like, factory when it comes to prospects for the draft. It's no longer North Dakota State. It's South Dakota State. They got actually a good handful of prospects that are probably going to be drafted and maybe maybe one or two that will go on day two. So be on the look. But nonetheless, he decides to walk on at Iowa and ends up winning the Next Man Up award for Iowa where he mainly played special teams during his um, freshman year. Goes into the following season, ends up being a first-team All-Big Ten then he goes to first team all american this year the dude is an incredible uh athlete at his size uh really really is man you ain't gotta worry about the play speed with him and that's just gonna offer himself so, uh that's just gonna give him the ability to be a very versatile piece i mean honestly similar to what you see maybe in guys like uh, uh antoine winfield or uh like uh kyle Kyle Hamilton ten and such, but I honestly do believe he can play on the outside because the length is good, the speed is good. Uh, I know he doesn't have a lot of press reps to his name there at Iowa, being kind of more of an off zone coverage uh, scheme there at Iowa. But I he's he's got the movement skills to hang in press. He's got the play straight to hang in press. It's just just something he didn't do a lot of. There at Iowa. Plays with good discipline, good anticipation, very physical run defender, as well as been a sure tackler 
over his career. Had three pick sixes in 2022, just in case you didn't know. He does have that, hey, if he gets his hands on the ball, he can take it to the house. He has uh, got that no problems ask. Someone who's able to mirror the, um, receivers, no problems ask. If we're going to nitpick, uh, I did think in off coverage, like his his uh, burst down downhill was was fine. Nothing special. It was fine. I think his change of direction was okay. Wasn't bad by any means, but it was just, it was all right. And I do think sometimes he gets a little bit handsy downfield. But all in all, I think I would be willing to take him as my corner two off the board. That's where I'm at with Cooper DeGene. And I just needed some of the uh, drills from his private pro day to kind of confirm what we've seen on tape. So I like it. I love it. And I can't wait to get some more of it. At number one, I got Quinion Mitchell out of Toledo coming in six foot 195 someone who also coming into the summer just missed my top 10 and as the year went on golly it was like okay can he do this against top competition because for the greater part of the last two seasons he has dominated i mean dominated the max six interceptions 27 pass breakups and the answer was yes yes he can really we only had that Marvin Harrison Jr. game in 2022 where, yeah, he allowed a touchdown, but I thought he did as good as a job as you could against Marvin Harrison Jr. He didn't back down from the challenge. And then he goes to the senior bowl. I say then like it just happened. No, we're talking 2022. And now fast forward to senior bowl 2024 where he might have been the best player in Mobile in my opinion. That's why he is in my top 10. I have a blue chip grade on him. I think he is going to succeed. Huge, huge fan. I love the build. I love the play speed. Like legit elite speed. It's not just the 4 3 3 3. I think I added a third three in there. But also, if you look at the GPS times of when he is tracked and when he is running with receivers, he's getting up to like 20, 23 miles an hour. That's great. You love that. You know he's got the speed, not just in the 40, but also on the field. He plays with really good recognition, really good anticipation. Very solid tackler. Uh, 6.3% missed tackle rate this year. Extremely good. Now let's kind of get with where we're going to nitpick some of the stuff with him. Uh, didn't play a lot of press there at Toledo. They played a hell lot of off coverage. And there are times where he was given like 10 yards of cushion. This is where it was like, okay, why are you opening your hips up so early when you're given like seven to 10 yards of cushion? You don't need to be doing that. You don't need to be doing that. Granted, in the one-on-ones at the senior bowl, I was like, oh, okay, there we go. This is good. This all looks good. So not to worry about that. Just something I wanted to comment on. Uh, I do feel like he could be a bit more aggressive against the run. Like I didn't necessarily see that acceleration down a hill to come play the run like just didn't play it with with that feistiness like there wasn't that aggression coming downhill and i know he's able to hit that throttle and get downhill a lot quicker so again kind of nitpicking things here and there and all in all man i think mitchell is just phenomenal like in terms of anticipation in terms of ball skills in terms of play speed uh, he's, he, he said he mirrors a lot of his game, uh, off of Darius Slay. So why not give him the Darius Slay comp? Cause it's pretty obvious who he mentors his game after. Let me know who are some of your favorite corners in the 2024 NFL draft class. Cause it's a good class. And there were a lot of names that I wish could, but didn't make the list. So let's talk about them in the comment section below. Go ahead, check out my other ranking videos if you haven't already. But as always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.